ever get this feeling like, the world's about to change. Like it really changed so much that it's like, even sci-fi can't keep up. Right, right. We're talking like seismic shifts, the kind that just rewrite all the rules. And that's actually what we're diving into today. This whole thing with uh, this guy, Luke Eifer. Yeah. Who seems pretty set on dragging us all into, I don't know, his version of the future. Yeah. Whether we want to go or not. It's, it's messy, but it all points to this guy, Luke Eifer and his obsession with, get this, the Singularity Panopticon. Singularity Panopticon. Okay, I'm already getting Black Mirror vibes. Yeah, exactly. Got what it. is that? Right. So imagine a world where your mind isn't, you know, entirely your own, right? Yeah. Where it's like the line between what you want, your desires, and what some central AI network kind of feeds you, suggests to you. Okay. They become indistinguishable. Oh, wow. It focuses on someone who got caught in the middle of all this, this woman named Hudian. Yeah, Hudi's story is really, I think, at the heart of this because it gets at the personal cost of all of Efer's, you know, grand schemes. Right? Yeah. But but with a really, really dark twist. Okay. One document, and it's it's fragmented, hints at this horrifying betrayal, a brutal assault by Eifer, actually. Oh wow. That just shatters her innocence and it sets her on this path of revenge. But we also have the perspective in all this, in these documents, of someone who's trying to expose Eifer's ambition. This guy, Shawn Michael, yes. who's some kind of investigative journalist, but he seems to be operating on a totally different wavelength. Absolutely. Shawn, it's almost as if he sees Eifer's pursuit of you know technological transcendence as some kind of blasphemy. Oh, wow. Right, like a yeah. violation of something sacred. And then there's another key figure in these documents. Oh, yeah. Christine Justine, right? Luke Eifer's own daughter. Yeah. Talk about a tangled web, but at the cost of like actually choosing any of it. Right, and and that's where it gets really interesting. Okay. Because there are these hints in Sean's writing mm. about Christine starting to see through things. Okay. Right. And that's what makes this whole resistance movement thing so intriguing. Because, you know, we just have these little fragmented clues from these documents. Remember Sean's emphasis on faith. Right, right, yeah. That seems to be like a recurring theme okay. with those who oppose Eifer. Mm. It's not just about rejecting the technology, right? Yeah. Those nofk2.pdf and nofk.pdf. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're rough, they're incomplete. Yeah. But they seem to point to a critical flaw in Eifer's plan. Something he calls, and I'm not kidding, and yeah. it seems like the resistance is putting their hopes on that. The documents suggest that they're trying to understand and exploit this weakness hmm. to use it against Eifer's system. They do, and it is yeah. it is intense. The documents point to this, like this final showdown. It all goes down at a place called uh, Solaris Station. Solaris Station. Which is basically the nerve center of Eifer's whole singularity panopticon thing. Okay, so paint a picture for me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how do they even get close with his surveillance network watching everything? That is where Christine Justine comes in. Okay. She's the key. Remember, she grew up inside this system. Right. Right? This is where, you know, the human element, it, it really comes into play. Okay. Eifer's got all the tech. Right? Yeah. But the resistance has something he just can't replicate. What's that? Choice. So it really does come down to this like battle of wills, yeah. technology versus like the human spirit. It's the ultimate showdown. So who wins? I mean, do we know what happens? It's, it's not clear cut. Yeah. That's what determines what this world becomes. Yeah. It makes yeah. you think. It does, it really does. And it kind of feels like a good place to uh, to wrap things up.